training video, I'm gonna show you how to make a self-defense stick. This is a simple homemade self-defense walking stick. It's a 36 inch dowel rod. You can pick up, I recommend you get something like oak. This is oak. The denser the wood, the better. Poplar is gonna to break too easily. It's too soft. So you'll see a lot of white pine or poplar. So skip those, but you wanna go for something like oak or stronger, oak hickory. Uh, a lot of hardwoods that are hard to find at a regular hardware store, you might be able to find it like a specialty shop. So you can look around and find the kind of wood that you like, or if you know how to uh, forage in the forest and find a really good straight piece of wood, you make your own out of that. I always say invest your time before you invest your money. Having something like this allows you to do training with basic moves for self-defense, blocking, striking, pushing, thrusting, lifting somebody off the ground, smashing through the teeth with something like the homemade self-defense walking stick. But you keep asking me how to make it, and so I wanted to give a quick tutorial on how to do that. Now, the first thing I'm gonna show you is that the ends come. Sorry, I keep getting spam calls today. But they're always rough, and I use a file to take the roughness off the end. Now, I can't find my file. I don't know what happened to it. I never moved it from the, the place that I keep it but somewhere it's gone missing. So I think one of the younger people probably found it and thought it was a weapon and they moved it or they were playing around with it when I wasn't here one day. So I'm gonna show you, if you don't have a file, you can still take that down a little bit. Hello, Sand R.E. Sanders, it's good to see you. And this is 80 grit, and I'm gonna show you three grits of sandpaper that I want you to use and I want you to get. And the first one, oh no, that's 120. Here it is, I wanted to show you that it looks different. Hello, Garen. Hello, Jeremiah. It's good to see you. This is an 80 grit sandpaper. Um, Sam Tuss Schaut Zoo is from Germany in Dortmund. Good to see you. Hello, Matthew. Good to see you. Um, but this 80 grit, you can see there's always going to be the number on the back. And 80 grit, basically, what I, I think that means from back in high school shop, it's 80 pieces of uh, grit sand in a square inch. And so... Sometimes it looks like this. And it has a color with it. Sometimes you can get it on the block. Jeremiah is in the Philippines. I saw a comment about the shillelagh. You're about getting ready to put your uh, final coat on the shillelagh. This is 80 grit. You can see it also says coarse. And there are different kinds that you can get. This one, you can see I've used for quite some time. One piece will last you many, many sticks. Medusa, sunshine, greetings. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here with us. But I'm going to show you with the 80 grit first. And I always like to pick these up. These you can usually find at like a dollar store. And I got this. This was three. It had three different pieces in it. It actually had 80, 120, and 220, which is what I like to use. G. Carlton, good to see you. Uh, G. Carlson said he's been traveling around Florida since moving here. He's going to Melbourne next week. Yeah, come on down. I'd love to see you once you get to Melbourne. Um, but this one actually had six pieces in it. So it had two of each, two 80, two 120, and two 220. And this cost a dollar and a quarter at the Dollar Tree. And it was like an, uh, one of those overstocks that they pick up. And you can't always find them there, but you can usually find something pretty cheap there. The point is, the stick itself, these have, when I first started buying them, these were under $10. And then with inflation, like everything else, these are up to about 12 bucks. But for, for $12 and a couple dollars in sandpaper that you can use for multiple projects and a little bit of butcher block oil or cutting board oil, you can make yourself a homemade self-defense walking stick that is also known as the Japanese Hanbo. This is 36 inches. You can also find... Uh, dowel rods that are 48 inches and even taller, but I found it's hard to find the taller dowel rods in anything other than poplar or white pine, which again, is just too soft for a self-defense stick. I want you to have something that's heavy, strong, flexible, and will be able to stop somebody for self-defense. That's why I recommend this oak. And I used to do a lot of these in one inch diameter, but I really prefer the inch and a quarter just because it's a little bit stronger. So from here, and this is the way I do it. You might be a woodworker and you have better techniques, but I just wanted to show you how simple I found to do it. What I, I usually do is I'll do a little bit of work and then I'll take a break 
and I'll spend about one minute on an end and I just go around and around. It's already starting to take the roughness down on the end. After that, I start to go through from the middle and I go up and down, turning the wrist as you go through. And this makes a big mess of fine dust, sand, uh, wood, wood shavings that you just vacuum up or it's easier if you use like a wet mop and a, 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 a rag with a little bit damp and then it'll just clean that up off the floor, whatever your surface is. I'm getting ready to clean the mats anyway, so I'll vacuum this and then I'll, I'll damp mop it. But the, the way that I like to do it is just hold on to it and twist. Uh, Richard says, good afternoon. Is a flat tip a rounded chisel point better? I like the flat tip, but I'll put a bevel on the end. So I'll make, I'll take the file once I find it or I have to probably go get another one, but I'll just put the, um, a bevel on the end. So it's not completely flat. It's not rounded, but it's, it's a little bit of both. And I, I, I don't want to put a, a tip on it. To, I don't want to stick this through somebody. I want to take this piece and smash it through his nose or his eyes or his teeth for self-defense. And I want that hard, hard end. It doesn't necessarily have to come to a point. Now that's a personal preference. If you want to do that on yours, then go ahead and do that. If you want to uh, carve your initials in it, if you want to take out your whittling knife and, and you're creative and you can make nice designs or even whittle in like a handle, you can put like uh, spirals around it. But I've always liked just a very smooth, simple stick because it's kind of like a gray man option. You can walk with it with your hand on the ground and then immediately get it into the self-defense fight if you want to. Yeah, and Garen says the bevel keeps it from splitting or chipping. And you can see, maybe if I hold it right there, there's a chip on this one right here and right here. And that's because normally you'll go through like a whole stack of them. You want to look at all the dowel rods if you go to the hardware store and try to find the best ones. But on my last trip, they were all kind of eaten up there on the end. So I figured I would just spend extra time sanding that out and then filing that out. So, and it, and it actually makes it kind of nice um, when you put that in there because it does give you a little bit more to grip onto if it's not perfectly round. I like to take the small sticks, the Tonbos that I make, and put a little bit of a flat edge on one side and then on the opposite side so that when you grab it, it's not perfectly round, but it's not coming out of your hand as easily either. So you're able to defend yourself better with it. Hello, Elite. It's good to see you. Welcome. Thanks for being here. So after I do the tip, then I'll do one side, and again, this is 80 grit, and it just happens that this one is green. Hello, Hank, good to see you. Um, I turn it over, and I do the other side, and I'm not an impatient person, but I don't have a lot of time to spend on projects. So, uh, and the key is, don't hold this tight. And, and you, a lot of you guys who are older grew up like I did, you took a shop class in school, or you were, had a father like I did who did a lot of woodworking. We, he used to finish a lot of uh, furniture. And so I learned how to sand properly, which is you don't apply a lot of force. You don't squeeze really hard. It's gentle pressure, just a little bit of pressure. And then you let the sandpaper do the work. And what I'm doing is I'm turning as I'm going front and back. And so, yeah, Garen says he, somebody walked up on him at night at the ATM. He wished he had a stick or he didn't have a stick. Lately, I'm just, I'm just more hyper aware of what's happening in our communities, and especially what's happening in my community. And um, if you can avoid going out late at night, of course you can, but if you can't, you gotta go do it. It's just really a good idea to pay attention. Situational awareness is always number one. So just going through, I like to do about one minute on that, throw it up and I do the other side. Addy says, thank, uh, great demonstration of the Hanbo the other day. Thank you. I appreciate that. And again, you're making small circles. Yeah, and Hank says you can always shove them down and run. I was watching my son. I picked him up from basketball uh, camp. And he had a big, big kid that, he's a big guy. But he's, he's like eight and he looks, or he's nine and he looks like he's 12. And they had him up against a 12-year-old who was big. And this kid just sh kept shoving him. To the ground and uh not not too bad um born toby wild hello from new zealand good to see you uh thank you for watching this tutorial i appreciate that but 
sometimes it's good to get shoved to the ground as your kid you grow up you learn how to not get shoved to the ground as much but yeah a simple shove is a real um yeah hand standing garen says is a good exercise absolutely and small circles light pressure don't push on it hard and like i said i know i'm preaching a lot of you guys know this you know this better than i do but it's maybe it's just a refresher and and, and if you have a better system for sanding or one of these steps in this process, put that in the comment section and share. Now, if you don't have a file, and it's a weird thing, I went to the heart, I went to two hardware stores, I went to Lowe's and Home Depot, and I'm uh, I'm a man, so I don't ask for help, of course. And so I'm walking around the store, I couldn't find a file. Next time I go, I'm gonna have to break down and ask for some help. I'm gonna go to the Ace Hardware, because I like the small independent stores, and I'll bet you they got a file at the Ace Hardware. But I'm gonna go in and, to find myself a file but if you can't find a file then you just use your hand at that angle and you'll get a bevel in there if you just keep doing it and that's going to take all the splinters off so the purpose of the 80 grit the lowest grit is it's going to rip a lot of that yeah richard says and i lathered him with my shillelagh um, it's going to take all those splinters out so you don't get them in your hand with this rough grit then i like to take a clean rag I don't have it with me, I forgot to grab that, and pull that sawdust off, and then go to, here it is, my 120, and again, you can see on the back, the 120, this is just a different brand, this is 3M, probably there's more 3M than anything else out there, and it says medium, the last one said course it's as simple as that course medium and then again i'm going to start here on the end and you just hold it yeah as garen said earlier this is going to be a great exercise it's going to be good for your grip i'm going to do that for 30 seconds to a minute and then you can feel it and you can start to feel it getting um softer and softer yeah gavin says try uh, folding the paper, stick it into the corner. I, I think I understand what you mean. I also will do that to... <laughs> yeah, Doug says, what do you call an unsanded dowel? And he said a stick. I love sticks for self-defense. I think you can't find anything more basic. You know, there's that saying that, um, I think it was Einstein said... And probably half the sayings on the internet are wrong anyway, but something like World War, I don't know what World War III will be fought with, what kind of weapons, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. And, you know, throwing back the idea that you go back to medieval, or not even medieval times, prehistoric times, because you destroy everything and we start over. Talk about a great reset. Uh-oh, I'm going to get flagged. I just said two bad words. CDC or the WHO or whoever it is, whomever it is that's censoring everybody these days, doesn't like certain words. Anyway, so we're going to twist that and turn that. I'm going to do 30 seconds. One side. I'm not going to show you the entire process because I know, you know who wants to stand and watch somebody sand all the way through. And then, yeah, if you try to ask, I'm going to have the Joe staff made of Osage soon. Yes, that is a work in pro uh, progress. And progress being the key word, we're making progress. We're getting closer to having that available. I also have been spending a lot of time on the website for those of you who wanted to do the um, certification for weapons training. If you wanted to teach the cane or one of the other weapons, or you just want the certification, then you can go to my Pasquinelli.com website and hit the contact button. Send me a message saying you want to do that, and I'll send you the details. So what, what I'm doing is I'm just hitting that ripped up piece right there. I don't know if you can see it. A little too close. Just to take that so that splinter doesn't get in my thumb when I'm using it. And this is probably one that I will spend a lot of time with, make really nice. And then I, I put a link below if you, if you don't want to make your own and you do want to have me send you one, I can send you one too, one of the ones that I make. Yeah, Jeremiah said, 
wish that I could be there in uh, the Philippines. Love to go to the Philippines. I had planned on going to the Philippines and India, that part of the world, right before the big lockdown, the, the cough lockdown, when a lot of people got the cough. That kind of messed plans up quite a bit. But it'll come back around. Yeah, so that just, this makes it super smooth. You almost can't feel it anymore. Do both sides. Make sure you get your bevel going again. And then the 220. And one of these is, I think this, this whole packet costs like six bucks, but I'll never use all of this unless you buy a, a thousand sticks from me and I make a thousand sticks to send them out. But I'll, I probably won't go through it either because if you use your sandpaper right, you're not going to tear it up. So, and it, it, for me, it's kind of fun too. Yeah, Garen says go study Maori uh, stick fighting. There's so many cool different ways that people fight with sticks. There's some African and island traditions where they they brain each other with sticks this size. And they, it's like everybody gets a beer on a Friday night. A couple guys get in the ring and just go at it with each other. And it's a very effective way to defend yourself. And it's a great gray man option. It's a great uh, prepper option if you're a uh, prepper for when stuff hits the fan, so to speak. So now this, this 220, feeling it now, it feels just soft as butter or smooth like a bowling ball. Feels really nice. Do that on both sides. And again, on the end. Garen, you'll have to send me a little bit better description of what you mean about the corner. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not like a woodworker, so I just know a little bit. I have a lot of experience sanding furniture and walls. I grew up sanding walls from drywall paste and painting them. I missed that one. Hank, I'll have to go back and look at that one in a bit. So I got it to about there. Now, I'm not going to oil it yet because I do have more stuff that I want to... I want to, uh, thank you, Garen, for that. Um, that I want to do to this one. I'm going to work a little bit more on the bevel. I'm going to get that one a little bit smoother, although that's really smooth now, both sides. And then you can see it better there if I hold it that way. You can see where that piece has chipped out. And I want to get that really smooth so that you don't really feel it. And that's going to take a little bit more sanding. So that'll take a little bit of time. There's a, a little bit one. Oh, it's right there. That one's almost gone, but I'm going to get that really smooth. You won't be able to see it very much, but this is a shipping tube in Ohio. When I made these, I had a really nice uh, PVC pipe that I cut and it was big enough to make because I made the bow size. That's the six footer. I made a 54 inch for the Joe. Then I made the Hanbo, which is 36 inch. And then I made the Tombo, which is an 18 inch stick. And um, when I would make those staffs, I would soak it in this, I had a long PVC tube, and you just go to the plumbing section, you have, have them cut it if, if you can't, if you don't have a way to get that long piece home, or you just wanna do one of these, get one that's a, like about 38 inches, and then you get the cap that goes on each side, and it doesn't even have to be this big around. You can see a little bit of oil seeped out the last time I did it, but you do the cap on the PVC. So I don't have that here. So what I did, uh, yeah, I was in uh, Dayton, Ohio for the last, Dayton area for the last uh, 26 years before I moved here about four years ago. And then I grew up in Columbus. Uh, I was there for a long time. So this, um, thank you, Brandon. And Brandon said lots of things to learn. So what I do now, since I don't have my PVC pipe and I can't pour oil in this or it would turn into a sloppy mess, I take a contractor garbage bag and I've got to bring that out here but I'll put this in the bag because they're thicker. And then I slide it into the tube. And then I take my oil 
and I pour it over the top and then all the let it just seep down and then it goes in so it starts to really soak it and then while it's inside the plastic I'll turn it a little bit so that I know I'm getting a lot to soak in and then I'll put the cap on it and I'll lay it flat and I'll roll it and then every few hours on the first day that I put it in there I'll take the cap off I'll take it out turn it around pour it in the other way if there's not enough oil on it I pour more more oil on it and then do the same kind of thing turn it and then put it back in here roll it a little bit and then I do that again and again the first couple days until and I let it soak for at least two days sometimes three I find if you go more than three days then it starts to congeal a little bit and it gets a little bit of a crust and I don't like that so after about two days maybe three days then I'll pull it out after and I've, and I've done that process where I've turned it and then rolled it and turned it and rolled it so then it becomes very heavy and you can feel the difference between a kiln dried uh, dowel rod that you picked up from Lowe's or Home Depot or do-it-yourself store and then one that you've soaked in oil for two days it becomes a lot heavier but more importantly it becomes more flexible so it almost comes back to life so that when you do hit something with it or someone for self-defense it's not going to shatter and break because it has its natural flexibility back when it used to be a tree and it had to bend with the wind and the weather and all that it was full of sap and water and that allowed it to stay alive and flexible when they cut it down out of the forest and they turn it into a dowel rod or planks or whatever they kiln dry it so they put it in low heat for a long time with a little bit of pressure i think and i could be wrong so don't quote me but i'm not a lumberman or a lumberyard man but they soak all the uh, water out of it and the sap out of it so that it becomes brittle and dry so it doesn't rot so you have to put the oil back into it and once you soak it for two days then about every uh, six months or so, you'll just have to run another um, oil, oiled up rag, put a little bit more oil on it. And then if you use it all the time, uh, I think you're asking about what this drawing is. This was to help a boy understand which direction I wanted him to do a certain thing in. So this, this sometimes has sayings on it. Sometimes my daughter who's eight likes to come in here and write motivational sayings to the other students about never giving up and never quitting and working hard. And so it used to be something that I used to teach. There's another one on this side uh, that has all of the jujitsu uh, requirements that we're working on right now. And this one's kind of more general. Anyway, that answer that question. But uh, you gotta get the oil on it. And then you start to, um, Wayne asked if I'll be showing a finished product. I don't have a finished Hanbo because I, I, I borrowed mine out, I loaned mine out to um, a student. But let me see, let me grab, let's walk with me. I'm gonna move the camera. And, and it's, not, there's no, it's not fancy, there's nothing special. A really hard, dense piece of wood. And it's not oil, it's not like greasy in your hands. Once you pull, you wanna rub it with a rag and kind of burn that oil in. And then when you start to use, the oil from your hands are gonna go into the the stick and it's gone this is a denser sound so it's a, a lower sound these are two that have been really well oiled you can hear the difference in the sound but that's what you that's what you want you want to be able to really soak it this one is sanded not like i said i'm going to sand it a little bit better and uh, spend a little bit more time on fixing the little imperfections uh, and again if you wanted me to send you one there's a link below for that but for less than 15 bucks, you can make your own, save your money. I say invest your time before you invest your money anyway. And um, soon I'm gonna have some more exotic hardwoods, starting with the Osage Orange, and then I think you're gonna do like a Purple Heart, um, and like an oak, like a different, different options, some hickory, some things that are more dense, that are heavier, that are hit a lot harder than just a regular one. I have some ironwood collie sticks or screaming sticks over here that would break anything else that's in this building except for the metal and the plastic because it's just iron, such a dead wood. So I would love to find some iron wood and be able to make one of those, one of these sticks. Um, yeah, Ipe wood too. There's so many great. Alfonso's in Seymour, Tennessee. Welcome Alfonso. 
That's where the, the Osage Orange is gonna come from, just outside of Franklin, Tennessee. I'm not sure where Seymour is, how close Nashville you are, but we've identified a stand of wood up there, just outside of Franklin, that uh, the Native Americans used to cut the Osage and make their um, spears and bows and arrows out of the wood because it's so strong and it doesn't break and it has that flexibility. So uh, that uh, use the oil. The, uh, the last thing I'll say about the oil, your, your, the oil from your hand will go into your stick, but also the oil that you put on the stick is going to go into your skin. And so if you use like a heavy metal type of oil, you want to avoid that. You don't want to do that because that heavy metal gets into your body and does all kinds of nasty things. We've got enough garbage in our, our food and our water anyway. <laughs> you don't need to add to it by using like a boiled, and I was, I was told recently the boiled linseed oil that you get now at the store is not like the stuff they used to have 50, 60 years ago. Now it's a petroleum product and so it has heavy metals in it. So you have to watch what you use. So instead you use the butcher block or the cutting board oils. Those things are biodegradable. They're, they're uh, food friendly because you cut the board and it's going in your system. So those have been made so that you can uh, use it and get it on your hands and not get sick because you're putting metals into your body. Uh, Wayne says, thanks. What's the thought on adding something to the end for a grip? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, olive oil or hemp oil. Those things are good. The only thing I'll say about olive oil is I have used a lot of olive oil in the past, but olive oil tends to go rancid after a while, a long time, but it'll go rancid, which means that it rots because it's a food product and it gets a little stinky. Uh, lemon oil, look at the ingredients on the lemon oil and make sure it's truly lemon oil and not uh, something that smells like lemon, they put lemon to smell, like it smells like lemon, but it's really oil that's coming from um, petroleum products, coming out of the ground. Almost everything's made. My whole shirt, you know, my shirt's petroleum, the floor is petroleum, the cameras, half the camera stands petroleum. So um, just if, it, if you find good lemon oil that's like natural lemon oil, and you're going to pay more for what you use, but you're never going to go through a whole bottle of that for one stick. You can use that your stick for the next 30 years and you'll, if you use your oil just for that, you're never going to use the whole thing up because it doesn't take much oil. But uh, that's the, the nice other nice thing about it is that it looks pretty. Yeah, I use uh, hemp oil and I think it's got eucalyptus in it. it smells mint, maybe menthol. It smells good. It feels good. But I've been using that on my joints lately and that stuff is a CBD oil. I've resisted it for years. The CBD, <laughs> just ignorance on my part and stubbornness. But I've been using that stuff on my hips and my legs and that stuff is amazing. So, and I even saw it today. I had a little rust on uh, something that I carry because during the summer, and it's a million degrees right now, so I'm really sweaty, and it's against my body. I use a, what's called a sticky, a sticky holster, and so the, uh, the release for the, the magazine, mag magazine release, was getting some rust on it, and <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to go into my kit and get out the... Um, the the bore oil or the oil that I use on the rest of the parts. So I used a little bit of the hemp oil and I put that right on my thing and cleaned it right up. Used a little rag and then, and I thought, man, we'll put it on the slide. I didn't put it on the slide, but anyway, it smells good now too. It smells like me at the end of the day after I've been rubbing that stuff in all day. But anyway, all that stuff works really good. The job is more of a wax. Uh, yeah, mixed with the hemp. Yeah, and, and putting, putting some wax on it is also a good idea, um, <clears throat> excuse me, because that, that'll make a kind of a harder finish and it'll last a little bit longer. So don't be afraid to use something like that. I would just do a light wax, like you said, the jojoba. Thanks, Tim, it's good to see you. Tim says you'll have to watch the replay. So that's what I've got for now. I've got some students coming in and I picked up a bunch of magazines. I found some magazines that are about this length of my, well, actually they're more this length. This is the 12 inch stick. So they're 12 inches. I, I measure them, they're 11 and a half inches. And uh, coconut oils, yeah. Uh, Jeremiah says, what about coconut? Coconut oil is perfect. Uh, you know, it has a lower, is it a lower melt point or a higher melt point? But either way, it doesn't matter. You'll be able to burnish it in just by rubbing it. But I found some uh, magazines and they have a really nice paper because a lot of magazines they make now have like throwaway, they're almost too thin. But you can roll up a magazine and if you train with a stick like this, you can learn how to defend yourself in all these ways. And then if you need a stick and there's a magazine nearby, you can roll it up. And I was at the barber shop and they had this, it's a new, it's a new local magazine for 
and it's usually one of those, uh, it's the ones where they have fancy pictures of the big houses around here. You know, all the big houses around here that are on the, the water are millions and millions of dollars. So they spend more money on a magazine like that to make it look fancy. But that's the perfect self-defense, improvised self-defense tool. So I'm going to make a video of those uh, maybe tomorrow if I have time. I want to show you how to fight with an improvised self-defense tool being the um, magazine. X -New NYC uh, Prepper, good to see you. Um, we're just getting ready to log off, but I wanted to show you how to make your own self-defense stick. And again, if you want me, to, if you want one of mine, uh, this is how I pay for the rent. And July, uh, yeah, July, <laughs> July's been slow. So uh, there's a link below if you want one of those. Or, like I said, go make your own. Spend less than 15 bucks, and you've got the perfect self-defense stick. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Thank you.